another medical affairs episode and today we have John Baba. John is one of the most amazing medical affairs leaders whom I know and very keen to implement and develop the latest trends into a traditional department like medical affairs. So let's start by saying hi John, how are you doing? Hi Dario, I'm very good, thank you, how are you? I won't complain, it's Friday, right? So looking forward to it. Uh, okay, so let's start with our first question. The role and goal of omnichannel and medical affairs, why do we need it? So omnichannel for me is not a nice to have anymore, it's a must have um, in pharma, but definitely for medical affairs, it should be part of our strategy uh, moving forward, it has to be built in. And for me, there are three key uh, benefits uh, for having omnichannel being built in to our medical sort of capabilities and, and operational plans. We know that our stakeholders, whether they are HCPs, patients, uh, payers, many of them are digital natives and a lot of them are using uh, digital, they're using various channels to get their information. And there's an interesting quote from one of the executives from uh, IBM from a few years ago, which uh, said something like, the last best experience that anyone has anywhere becomes the minimum expectation for the experience they want everywhere. And so whether we like it or not, our stakeholders are using digital, are using uh, various other channels to engage outside of pharma. And there is now an expectation of pharma to be delivering this level. And more so with medical, we, and we know that you know, HCPs, stakeholders, they want to engage with medical because they want to understand the data, they want to understand the science, they see the true value of this engagement. This is a really great opportunity for medical to step up in their engagement framework to make sure that they can bring this knowledge and this exp expertise to these uh, stakeholders um, to, to address these areas of unmet educational or informational needs. So, uh, it's, it's, it's about meeting the expectations of our, our stakeholders. It's also about providing this convenient, easily accessible, digestible uh, information. So long ago on the days where we you know, produce hundreds of slides and produce loads of long, long documents to communicate what we're trying to do or to educate our, our, our stakeholders. This is about really becoming personalized and targeted with our approach, with our communication. And we know that medical is already personalizing their engagements with the, with the stakeholders, uh, but this is really about the mass reach uh, and to ensure that those people are getting the information uh, that, they, that they want in an accessible, convenient uh, and digestible way. It's also a good way for medical to start getting insights about channel preference, about what, what works for, uh, for, for a stakeholder and what doesn't. And I think if we've got channels set up and connected in the back end. And again, this is not just medical, this is working across commercial, across tech, this is truly cross-functional. Uh, and this is the beauty of omni-channel, it's not about one, one uh, function, this is about all these functions working very closely together to deliver one seamless customer experience. If we can get, if we can, if we're able to look at the data from the usage of these channels to understand what what an HCP likes and what they don't like, what a stakeholder uses and what they don't use, that can then make us uh, understand their preferences and allow us to be more personalized and individualize the information that we, uh, we give them. And the third one is about maintaining, you know, creating and maintaining that trust with our stakeholders. So um, we want, we want to be the ones that they come to when new information becomes available. And the harder you make it and the longer it takes for this information to be available, they'll start looking elsewhere and they'll start going to other sources to get this, um, to get this information. So it's about maintaining that relationship and creating that trust, uh, maintaining that trust as well with our stakeholders. Uh, so we become that trusted partner of choice for them. And medical is already a, you know, a trusted partner of choice in, in pharma but it's about cementing that position and also expanding beyond the current reach that we have uh, with, with our stakeholders. Thanks a lot for the great answer. My next question would be how to implement, of course, with proper change management, a comprehensive omnichannel strategy with the medical affairs and uh, without losing the articulation of science instead of pitching. 
So um, I think there are key things that need to be put in place in order to deliver on a successful a sort of omni-channel or digital strategy in general. And there are three key foundations that need to be put in place. You need to have the right mindset. And we know medical has gone through a lot of sort of change management and changing that mindset that, you know, this is now a key requirement that medical needs to be doing. It's not something that other we need to rely on other functions to do. We actually, in order to deliver on our value proposition as medical, we need to make sure that we've got these capabilities uh, in place. So it's about changing the mindsets and ensuring that we're all sort of on the same page and we're all uh, driving in the same direction. And this is about mindset top down and bottom up. So leadership plays a really uh, key role here to ensure that uh, the teams are aligned and are bought in into, into, into this. Uh, it's about having the right tools uh, in order to deliver on, on the omnichannel sort of ambition of, of the organization and digital. And it's about having the right people, the right skills in place to make sure that you've got, you, they're able to deliver and they understand what needs to happen and they know how to do it. If you've got these things, then the next thing you need to look at is what are the objectives that you're trying to meet with omnichannel? How is omnichannel going to help you deliver on what you want to be uh, doing, what you want to be communicating, what your business objectives are, because it may not be, it, it may not be the solution for what, for, what, for what you want. So it's important to make sure that you are addressing a business problem rather than creating a solution for the sake of it. And for me, Omnichannel is about the who, the what, and the how. So in terms of the who, it's about who is your audience? Have you mapped out your HCP journey? Do you know which customers you're going to be uh, targeting or which HCP types you're going to be targeting? And then it's about the what. What is the content that you want to be communicating? Have we mapped out all the content that we have? And do we know what content is relevant for which specific healthcare professional uh, or stakeholder? Um, and then it's about the how. So how are we going to be now communicating this information? What channels do we already have? Um, and what is the low-hanging fruit that we can start with? And what can we build later based on the capabilities that we've got in the organization? And really, for me, it's about starting small and then building. I think we there's a lot of talk about omnichannel, and I think we get into lots of rabbit holes, and we end up doing a lot of talking and not a lot of action, not a lot of doing. So for me, it's about starting small, select one customer segment, uh, select one therapy area, a couple of channels that are already in place, and start from there, create some simple user journeys, get some feedback on those user journeys, ensure that there is a feedback loop built into those user journeys to get some feedback directly from the stakeholders or the end user. And then use an iterative approach to learn and then expand and scale. And then you can then go to the organization and say, this is why you know, I need in X investment in this area. I've done this pilot. These are the results. Imagine you know, what we would get if we were to expand this and to build more, even more capabilities. But it's, it's important to just start somewhere. And actually, a lot of the learnings will come as you, as you, start, doing, as you start doing this. I worry that we, we just sit around in meetings and we just do have lots of discussions and we just end up not really moving ahead. And it's important to just make a start and a lot of things will fall into place as, 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 we, as, we, as we move. Thanks a lot for the answer. And my last question for today is beyond the slogans, how to start actually with an omnichannel transformation journey in medical affairs? I think I've, I, I, some, some of this will I, I, I've sort of touched on already, but for me, it's about looking at your sort of your medical affairs value proposition or your medical affairs objectives, and then looking at what are you trying to address, which, which are your objectives that you're trying to address, what, what are your issues uh, that you're trying to address, and then looking at how omnichannel or how digital can support you in delivering this. As a digital or uh, omnichannel, and I... I, I I don't want to use these terms uh, sort of interchangeably because they are different things, but the concept is the same. Just because we're all talking about talking about omnichannel, it doesn't mean that omnichannel is going to be the right way to solve or to address a specific uh, business objective. So it's about really knowing what are you trying to answer uh, and what are you trying to address, um, and then it's about understanding what is your current current processes, what, what's your current state of play in your organization, who is doing what when it comes to omnichannel, what channels have you got, what platforms are in place, 
uh, who is owning certain things and how are you going to be collaborating and leveraging some of these things? Because again, traditionally in medical, this omnichannel piece does, hasn't been sitting within medical. We haven't had people who looked at data analytics. We hadn't had people who looked after platforms from a medical perspective, but this is now increasing and increasing more and more. But also we know that our commercial colleagues have done an amazing job in setting uh, these platforms up and setting up the infrastructure for data analytics. So how can we work with them and collaborate with them uh, to leverage what's already in place? Uh, obviously there are firewalls that need to be put in place as, a, as appropriate, but this is about working together and not reinventing the wheel uh, and looking to see how we can leverage uh, expertise that we already have within, uh, within the organization. And then it's also about trying to then build your road plan or roadmap. Where are you trying to get to and what can you do now? What is your low hanging fruit versus what is your North Star? What are you trying to get to at the end? And then as you say, you know, we start with small steps, we build, and it's important to start engaging with the relevant stakeholders, right? So whilst I'm sitting at Global and I'm thinking about this omni-channel plan for medical affairs, I need to also be talking to your region and I need to be talking to the uh, local operating companies. So the people sitting at the, at the country level who are actually gonna be executing, have they got the right capabilities in place? Have they have the right resources? Otherwise I'm gonna be building something going to be building a plane, but there's no one to fly, right? I need to make sure that people can actually execute uh, on the ground as well. And I also want to get their perspective and their feedback in terms of helping to shape this uh, omni-channel plan, because it's important to get their feedback. They're much closer to their stakeholders, to their healthcare professionals, to their patients, uh, to their payers, so they can provide really useful insights on how this can be, can be shaped. Um, and I think it's about also ensuring that you've got some KPIs that you set up uh, in place at the end to see how you're progressing, um, have regular sort of checkpoints to look at the st you know, state of play, Does something need to change, do you need to drop something, do we need to introduce something else? Um, and for me, the KPIs, there should be internal KPIs as well as external KPIs. We need to understand what's happening internally uh, in terms of processes that people bought in, are they adapting user journeys, are they using the content that's being produced? But also externally, how are our stakeholders responding to this content beyond vanity metrics? So it's about looking at the depth of engagement rather than the breadth of engagement. So is this content uh, improving their level of knowledge, the base level of knowledge? Is it uh, useful for them? Is it potentially having an impact on their clinical practice to potentially improve patient outcomes? So we, start, we need to start looking at these things to really measure the impact of these initiatives that we are uh, doing as part of um, Omnichannel. But the key thing is this has to be done cross-functionally. This is not medical just doing it on its own. Medical and commercial have to be sort of joined at the hip in terms of the planning. I know people will say, a lot of people say, you know, you, you, you're talking to the same audience at the end of the day. Yes, but we also know that medical talks to a uh, specific audience sometimes that commercial doesn't talk to because of where your life cycle is of the drug. But this, when I say joined at the hip, it's in terms of us showing up as one organization in front of our stakeholders. There will be things that medical need to do. There'll be things that commercial need to do, but the sort of the right hand and the left hand need to know what they are doing. And we need to be working together to ensure that we're not bombarding HCPs and that we are having the relevant touch points with the relevant HCPs at the right time. Excellent, John. So thanks again, John. It was a great conversation today. And I know you are the only channel Jada in Pharma. So looking forward to seeing you in the Bromic. So uh, thanks for all that. Thanks. <laughs> looking forward to it. Thanks, Dario. Thanks, everyone.